So we had treat night recently. I wasn't quite sure what to expect because the COVID, how would that affect the numbers, the rain that happened? Well, we found out pretty early on, 20 minutes in, we only had about six kids show up. And I'm like, oh boy, this is a problem. We got a bunch of candy to give out. So I told our stations, the people who were there, I was like, just start grabbing handfuls, shoving it in kids' bags, because I don't want to take it, so I don't want this leftover stuff. So we were generous, heaping handfuls. So we did that for a while. And then we had another problem. Uh, kids starting showing up. And we're like, wow, um, what do we do now? So we started, we started walking it back. All right, one piece for you, for you, for you. And then, because we had started so, so with so much, um, we ran out, we were running out of candy. So someone offered to go to the store, get some more candy. I said, nope, we're not going to do that. We're going to make do with what we have. So I went in the back, we found some mint, I found some mints. Yeah, so we started giving out some mints, so my apologies if you ended up with a mint from the church, that was one of the stations. Um, we actually had about 300 kids come through, and it, it was a good night. Um, but it, it was made happen by the generous support of, of people like you. We gave out more candy than we ever had before, and a few mints too. This has been a weird, difficult year uh, bec uh, because of what's been happening. Um, what I've noticed out of this year is just people's generosity, a, a desire to, to give, to make the world a, a better place. At the beginning of this, we saw some uncertainty with businesses shutting down. We shut the doors of the church. We weren't quite sure how, how long things were going to last or how, how it would go. But very shortly after that, what we received was just this outpouring of generosity from people like you. I was really taken back by it. I was humbled by how much you guys gave. You made it a priority to give, and you still continue to, to do that. Generosity is such a, a beautiful thing. People want to be generous, but it, I think it's tough in our American culture because we come up against this idea from the culture of, of being consumers, where life's about us, our wants, our desires. And this can hold us back from really living the kind of life that God wants for, for us. So how do we navigate? Well, we're going to take a look today at 2 Corinthians. We're continuing our series there. And we're jumping into to chapter 8, where it's just really a departure from what Paul has talked about to this point. He talks about a different topic, generosity. And in there, you're going to see in verse 1, he's going to talk about churches in Macedonia. The region of Macedonia was to the north, in the northern part of Greece. He's writing to the church of Corinth, which is in the southern part of Greece. So the churches of Macedonia were th places like Philippi, Thessalonica, Berea, and they are the examples of giving. So 2 Corinthians chapter 8, I'm going to start at verse 1. And now, brothers, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. Out of the most severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. So Paul was, the context here, Paul was writing to them. He's like, I'm going to take, he's taking up a collection for the believers, the poor believers in Jerusalem. Their Jewish brothers and sisters were facing a lot of difficulties, persecution, poverty. They lost jobs and homes, their businesses, even family members. It was really rough for them. But as you notice here in, in this verse 2, it wasn't really a cakewalk either for the Macedonians. Look at the words that are used to describe. Severe trial and extreme poverty. I'm not sure if I were Paul that I would even have brought up the subject of, of giving with them because times were tough. Life was hard. They didn't have money just laying around to, to give. I think I might have done a fundraiser for those churches. And yet, despite their trial and poverty, what do they have? Overwhelming joy. 
This was based out of a vibrant relationship with Jesus. They had all that they needed in their relationship with, with him. And that led to rich generosity. Their deep poverty, their trials, didn't stop them from giving. Look at verse 3. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able, even beyond their ability. So they gave beyond their ability, which meant they gave sacrificially. They could have simply said, yeah, now's not a good time. I really don't have anything. But somehow, some way, they gave. They sacrificed so that others could be blessed. And that giving hurt them. Perhaps there was less food on the table. Maybe they went an extra season with their clothes kind of wearing out. They probably should have bought new ones, but they're going to they're gonna just make do with what they had because giving was too important here. Again, verse 3 at the end. Entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in the service to the saints. Notice how they viewed this. They viewed the giving as an opportunity, as a, as a privilege. They didn't have to give. They wanted to give. There was no manipulation there, no guilt trips. The church begged for the, for the privilege of giving to the brothers and sisters in need. In verse 5, they did not do this as a, uh, whoops, excuse me, and they did not do this as we expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord and then to us in keeping with God's will. So this was unexpected for Paul. It caught him off guard. Their response was spectacular. The, the response could be explained by the fact that they gave themselves first to the Lord. Their lives were committed to Jesus, to doing what he wanted, to making him a priority. And so when this opportunity came up, they say, oh yeah, that's God's will. We want in. Now, it, it's fair to say that ultimately this passage that we're reading today isn't about money. It's about Jesus and living for him. How does life look when, with Jesus at the center? It's different. People love differently. They handle their money differently. They give differently. And this is a, as a result of a connection with, with Jesus. Jesus was the source of their generosity, and his grace was central to their giving. And so our second point is, that, is really about the grace of giving. Verse 6. So we urge Titus, since he had earlier made a beginning, to bring also to completion this act of grace on your part. So what Paul's doing now is he's turning his attention to the Corinthians. He had brought up the example about the Macedonian churches. And he said, hey, those churches, were met, they're, they're an encouragement to you and a challenge. They didn't have much, but they still gave. You guys as Corinthians, you do have. And so I would encourage you to, to give. And Paul said, we started this conversation with you earlier. But he wanted to make sure that they were going to follow through with actually giving. And he didn't twist their arm, though. He talked about grace. He emphasized that word grace. Look at verse I'm just going to show you just a few incidences here. Verse 1. And now, brothers, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. Verse 6. So we urge Titus, since he had earlier made a beginning, to bring also to completion this act of grace on your part. Verse 7. We just, uh, but just as you excel in everything, in faith, and speech, and knowledge, and complete earnestness, and your love for us, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. Verse 9. For you know that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that through his poverty you might be rich. Paul wanted to make sure that they understood grace and giving were tied together. A grace is undeserved kindness. Grace isn't supposed to be done, uh, giving isn't supposed to be done under compulsion. It's not about obligation. Giving should be an actual demonstration of grace. And so giving is a deeply spiritual act. The Corinthians were doing so well spiritually in other areas. Look at what he says in verse 7 about those areas. 
But just as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in your love for us, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. He said, hey, they had vibrant faith. Their words brought life. They were growing in the knowledge of God. They were de deeply, they deeply loved each other. But now they needed to demonstrate as followers of, of Jesus that they're not holding back certain areas. It's not like, hey, Jesus, here's my faith and love. You can have that, but don't take my money. That's not how now it works. Jesus wants all of us. And now was the time for them to show that they were fully submitted to, to Jesus in the area of generosity, as well as those other areas he had talked about. So when a person is generous, she's demonstrating that Jesus is Lord over that area. He's boss of that area. And so she's first, as we saw in verse 5, committed herself to the Lord, and then out of that grace uh, flows, uh, flows giving. So this kind of, of giving, it's, it's free, it's cheerful, it's joyful. That's an evidence of God's grace at work in someone's life. Because why? Well, giving's largely not natural. We tend to think about what's ours. Well, we get touchy when people talk about money. We tend to spend money building our own kingdom. And so it is God's grace when we spend money building, building God's kingdom, not our own. And it's God's grace in our lives when we become generous with what God has actually blessed us with. This way of living is much better than the alternative. As Americans, there's this battle, constant battle for our allegiance. Materialism has a way of consuming our lives and making every, about everything that we've uh, accumulated. Grace steps in and changes us allows us to be freed from all of that. Again, this passage isn't so much about money. It's about grace. It's about Jesus, which is why Paul now talks about Jesus, because he's the foundation of giving. Verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for, for your sakes he became poor, so that through his poverty, you might become rich. I love that verse. Let's read it again. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. This is the foundation of giving. Jesus. And how Jesus lived his life. So this verse, again, it's not about money. It's not saying rich Jesus forked over some cash for us, and now we're loaded, and we're good to go. Um, that's not it at all. Paul's just reminding them, like, listen, this is what Jesus did for you. And because he did that for you, you can do that for others. Jesus re reached out in grace. Though Jesus was rich, he became poor, and we who were poor could become rich. Think about it this way. Jesus is in heaven. And he has perfect peace, he's surrounded by angels, the beauty of heaven, he has, a, he has a perfect relationship with his father. He could do anything he wanted, and he decided to come to earth, to take on a human form, to suffer, to die on a cross. Why did he become poor? Again, so that we could be rich. Not about money. This is the, the gospel. We have sinned. We have messed up. We are separated from God. This is true poverty. We can do nothing to earn favor with God, nothing to earn heaven. Enter Jesus, who became poor for us, who died on a cross for us, so that we can put our faith in him to be saved, to be forgiven, to have peace with God. This is true riches. You can see how Jesus' total generosity has something to say to us with how we should live our lives. I think the point that Paul's trying to make is we can be generous because God has been generous with us. 
Jesus was generous, and it makes sense for his followers to also be generous. So this applied to the Corinthians, but also applies to, to us here and now. We have received generously, and we can give generously. Jesus showed us grace, so we show, when we show others grace, we're acting like Jesus. This is really a theme throughout the New Testament. We loved because we've been loved. We forgive because we've been forgiven. We reconcile because we've been reconciled. We're gracious because we've been shown grace. We, really what we're doing here is we're reflecting what Jesus has done for us. We treat people the way that Jesus has treated us. So simply put, the challenge here is to act like Jesus. Why should we give generously? Well, Paul pointed Christians back to Jesus. Jesus has been generous with us, so reflect that generosity in your own life. So what are some steps that we can take to grow in generosity? Well, the first is, is again, it's this verse 9. Consider Jesus' generosity. You know that the, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that through his poverty we might become rich. The grace of giving starts by focusing on Jesus. If we look any other place, we're going to come up empty. This is the only place that we're going to find a solid foundation, a proper understanding and appreciation for all that Jesus has, has accomplished for us should motivate us into action. The good news of Jesus is our total foundation for life. So when we look at Jesus, we see generosity. It's amazing how generous Jesus was and continues to be to us. We're so needy, so little to offer, and yet he freely gave, continues to do so. And so here it is, we start by fixing our eyes on Jesus, which should lead us to the next thing, to give yourself to the Lord. That's what they did, as we see in verse 5. They didn't do as we expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord. So really, in light of all that Jesus has done for us, what is our response? The proper response are lives that are lived, oriented around Jesus, totally living for him, giving ourselves to the Lord. And so the act of giving is really not a separate thing. It, it's tied to our relationship with Jesus. The grace of giving flows out of a life that has been uh, shown Jesus grace. I love the way this Bible passage talks about it. This is talking about if you're really committed to Jesus, then these things are going to be an extension of that. You're not going to hold things back. You're not going to say, here, you take some things and I'll take some things. Everything is in. Here it is, Jesus. I'm yours. Here's my life. I'm going to do your will. And so the question that we're faced with here, the question is, you know, what areas are we holding back from, from Jesus? Have you given yourself to the Lord? This is an ongoing devotion to being committed to doing what Jesus wants, to saying yes to him day after day. And the final point is simply to be generous, as we see in verse 2. You know, we see that the Macedonian church, they had severe trials, uh, overflowing joy, extreme poverty, but poverty that welled up in rich generosity. Generosity will flow out of our lives if we love God and by extension love others. Giving is really a heart issue. What people do with money is a good indicator of where their heart really is. Jesus wants your heart. He's not looking to pry your wallet from you. This is an offer of life, true life, a better life. And so being generous allows a person to give differently. Not out of obligation, because you have to, you feel guilty about it. But Jesus-centered generosity will result in joyful, cheerful giving. And that is good for our souls. So I want to encourage you to be generous, to follow through, through on some of these things. What does generosity look like for you? Is your life marked by generosity? For me, talking about these concepts was so strange growing up in a church. My dad would put money 
um, and give money to the church. It just didn't make sense to me. Why not spend that money on a bicycle or uh, baseball cards, video games? You know, if he's going to give away some money, why don't you fork some over this, this guy? I didn't get it because I didn't get Jesus. Eventually, Jesus changed everything for me. That includes giving, but really so much more. A life of joy and peace. A life marked by God's grace and his faithfulness. We have the opportunity to make our lives count for eternity. To love God and love others well. So let's be generous because Jesus has been generous with us. Let me pray. Father, we're grateful for the generosity that you've displayed. We know that you're a giver and you desire your people to be givers as well. Lord, uh, in this culture, we realize it's difficult. It can be a battle, but we want to follow you well in this. Thank you for the grace of, of giving. We know that this is not something that's uh, natural, really, but it, we pray that you would work in us to give, to have open hands, to be generous for your glory and our good. In Jesus' name.